Hi guys, welcome back to the course. So in this lesson, we're going to have a look at the project setup. Uh, in the project setup, we're going to set up an express server, we're going to make requests to that server using Postman. And we're also going to look at um, initializing Git um, and a GitHub repository that we're going to push into GitHub. So I'm going to go over to my, uh, my project at the moment, and I am going to basically go into the folder I want the project. I'm going to create a new, a new folder called React Full Stack Course. You can call this folder whatever you want um, for the purpose of this video. I'm just calling it that. Uh, it really doesn't matter what the project name is, whatever you want to call it. So I'm then going to drag and drop this empty folder into VS Code to open it up. You guys can use uh, whatever IDE you want. I recommend VS Code, obviously, because it's easier um, whilst we're following along the tutorial together. There's a few extensions I use that I'll talk about uh, as we go along. They're completely optional, the extensions I use on VS Code, uh, but they might make your life easier and it might make it easier to follow on the course. So you've also got to make sure you've got Node installed, uh, run the latest version just to be safe. Um, but if you guys are, are at this tutorial, uh, I'm sure that you guys already have Node installed. You're already aware of Node. Um, and you're you're kind of you're getting to you're you're starting from a um, area where you've got a little bit of expertise. So to get started, I'm going to go straight to terminal, new terminal, and inside that terminal, I'm going to bring make it bigger a bit. I'm going to do npm space init dash dash yes. That dash dash yes just basically skips a load of configuration settings. It automatically does it all for us. So when I click yes. It uh, initializes the npm project, creates us a package.json, and we're ready to go on that front. Whilst I'm also here, I'm going to install some packages that we need to get started. So I'm going to do npm space i, which is essentially npm install, and then another space express and dot env. These are the two packages we require for this uh, this lesson. Express is going to be our express um, it's our express framework that we're going to create the server with. .env is a package that allows us to basically access environment variables. So I'm going to install those there. I'm then also going to do npm space i space dash dash save dash dev. And then after that, I'm going to install node mom and concurrently. Basically, these two packages, uh, they're just helping us with uh, development. The dash dash save dash dev basically tells us that these are, that tells um, our NPM project that these are um, development dependencies. That essentially means we only need them in development and not in production. Uh, they just ease our development process. So I'm going to install those packages there. Whilst they're installing, I'm going to go to package.json and underneath test, I'm going to create a new script. So underneath our scripts, underneath test, I'm going to create a new script called server. And then inside that script, inside quotes, I'm going to do modemon, nodemon server.js. I'm going to save that there. So the scripts basically allow, uh, tells tells us when we add uh, when we run them in the terminal, it will say uh, if we run npm run server, it will basically run this script for us, the nodemon server.js. Nodemon is essentially a uh, it's a package to allow us to restart the node application every time we save a file. Um, you'll see that in practice in a bit, but basically it means that we don't have to manually restart the file every time we save changes to our to our files and whatnot. So no one will detect that a file has changed, restart the server for us, and allows it for easy um, development. So after that, I'm then going to go in to the files here on the right, and create a new file. I'm going to call that file .env. So .env files file essentially holds what are called environment variables. Environment variables are something that we want hidden. They might contain keys, secrets, something like that. Uh, when we host this later on at the end of the um, at the end of the course, we will basically set up those environment variables on wherever we're hosting our application. Um, so for now, we're going to add a port in there, and we're going to do port equals five thousand, and we're going to end up using this variable to uh, run the server off of this port. Uh, but it allows it to be hidden and a lot of, uh, so the port variable will be rewritten by a lot of hosting place, uh, hosting um, providers and they'll set a custom port. But if you put it in the .env, it allows them to do that easily. So if I create a new file then, I'm going to create a new file called server.js. And inside that server.js, the first line I'm going to do is require curly braces and then quotes .env. 
config. This allows us to access the environment variables we've written in the .env file. It allows us to access them and use them in our application. We're then going to initialize our express server. So const express equals require curly brackets quotes express. So that's importing express into our application. And then we're going to do a const app equals express. So this is initializing our uh, express server. And then we're going to add some um, kind of middleware to our server. So we're going to do app.use, uh, rounded brackets, uh, uh, not rounded brackets, sorry. Normal, uh, no, uh, yeah, rounded brackets, no quotes, sorry, I meant. Express.json, rounded brackets again. This essentially, if you hover over it, um, sometimes you get IntelliSense. So it's a middleware that allows us to pass JSON and look at, uh, in our requests. And then we're also going to use app app.use express dot url encoded curly brackets there as well so what we're then going to do is we're going to um, create our first api route so we're going to create app.get it's going to have rounded brackets uh, we're going to do a slash there so every time we make a get request to slash once we've got our server running we then want to return something so we're going to do a comma we're going to do uh, rounded brackets again, request, comma, res. And then we're going to do equals arrow. And we're going to open up a function, essentially, which has a request and a response passed into it. So we don't want to do anything clever when we do an app.get um, to the forward slash. We just simply want to return a message telling people that this is the um, full stack React tutorial or course, full stack React course express server so we'll test this out shortly with postman and we'll we'll see that in action um, but this is basically just kind of a starter string a starter request um, to show that we, our app is running and then what we're going to do to get the application working is we're going to uh, to get the server running even we're going to do app.listen we're going to do rounded brackets and then we're going to pass in our port so process.env.port this is accessing the port we have set in our .env file above. We're going to then do a callback function. So rounded brackets, arrow, curly brackets, and then we're going to console log. Uh, we're just going to console log a message telling us that the, uh, the, the server is running. So what we're going to do in there, we're going to use backticks. So the backtick ticks allow uh, uh, template literals. They allow us to put variables inside of our string. So I'm going to do server running on port and I'm just going to console log the port. So I'm going to do a dollar sign and curly brackets there, process.env.port and that will console log our port for us. So what I'm now going to do is I'm going to, now that we've got our real basic um, express app running there, I'm going to, inside the terminal, I'm going to run npm run server and that is going to run our script. Okay, we've gone wrong already. What's wrong here? Okay, so our port is already in use. That shouldn't happen for you guys, but I think I'm already using something on the, on port 5000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to close off the server. In most cases, you guys won't have this problem. I've obviously got a port, uh, server already running on that port, which is completely fine. Okay, if I close the server I've got running on another tab, this is what's going on wrong there. It should open up that port for us. So if I run npm run server again, there you are, my port 5000 is now open and I can use it. If you guys did have a problem with that port, say your port was in use, you could easily got to go to .env and change that port to another number, maybe 5001, something like that. Okay, so our server's now running and what we're going to do is we're going to go to Postman and we're going to do a get request to the forward slash and try and get that to um, display this message. So uh, I'm going to open up Chrome. I'm going to show you guys quickly what you'd uh, what you'd expect um, to 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 find with Postman. So you can find Postman by going to postman.com. Basically, what this allows us to do is make HTTP requests to our server or any server uh, and bring back data. You can see that in the screenshot here. Um, you can download it; it's entirely free. Uh, I'll zoom in for you guys as well. Um, you can click the download buttons here. I'm on a Mac, so I download on Mac, for example. Uh, download the application. Um, and then I'd open it up and you would see something like this. So this is Postman opened up here. I'm going to click the plus in the top left. 
And basically what Postman allows us to do, as I said before, is make HTTP requests. Seeing as our server, if I minimize this slightly, uh, let's zoom in on Postman as well, um, is you can see that our server is running on port 5000. We made a get uh, a get root to forward slash, so that's just the default um, root, and it should send us back this message. So if I make a get request, so I've got on the drop down here, I've got get requests. I'm gonna do HTTP forward slash localhost 5000. And oh, I'm gonna extend this slightly, or zoom out slightly, so you can see the send button. I'm gonna click send here. And you can see it's returned a message saying full stack react course express server so our express server is up and running which is brilliant we also are going to set up another test we're going to create a post route so that we can check that we are getting through the data we're sending via our http requests so we've got we need to make sure that we've set up our server to allow that so i'm going to do app.post so we're going to make a post request or a post route sorry i should say and we're just going to call it slash name for now we're going to do comma request comma response again open up a arrow function there and then we're going to basically what we're going to do is we're going to send a name to this uh to this endpoint here we're going to do a http request with a name and what we're going to do is try and re respond with that name to show that we are accepting we can that we've got our server set up and we can we can send data properly so what i can do here is i can go um, what i'm going to do is go if request.body.name we're going to return res.json round brackets. We're going to do curly brackets in there. So we're going to return a JSON object. And we're going to return the name that was sent to us just to check that we're accepting data. If there's no, so basically if we if we send uh, data through to our endpoint, it would be available in request.body. So we're going to send through data with the with uh, the object name and name, uh, and then we're going to output that. So if the, we're going to do an else statement here. So if there is a no request.body not name, we're going to return an error. We're going to do res.status 400. So the status code of 400 basically tells us that there is a there is a it's an incorrect response. It's an incorrect um, request. So we're going to do res.status 400. And then we're going to send through a JSON object with error, no name provided. So if someone doesn't uh, provide a name to this area, we uh, to this endpoint, we still return something. So let's open up Postman. So we've got our get request here. I'm then going to do slash name. So that's the route we made, slash name. I'm going to make a post request here. And then what I'm going to do is go to body. On the tabs at the top, we need to go to um, form URL encoded because we set it up as a URL encoded server. That's with this express.url encoded line here. So I'm going to click that tab. And then I'm going to send through name. And I'm going to send through John Doe. I'm going to send a request there. And you can see that our server returned, when we did a request that endpoint, the name we provided John Doe. So if I change that to John Doe 2, it would come through as John Doe 2. But we also set back a fallback. We set up a fallback to say, um, to, to return an error message if we didn't provide a name. So if I don't, if I uncheck this, we're now not providing a name. You'll see we did, a, we sent the request. We got a 400 bad request status, which is what we is. That's what we set with the um, dot status um, response in the response, um, and we sent through an error, no name provided. So that's working exactly as we'd expected, and that is basically our. Um, express application set up and running we've got it working to a basic extent now um, and we can now expand this with uh, proper routes we'll create users and, and whatnot so what i'm going to do now is now that we've got a starting point to our application i'm going to close off this application i'm going to do Control c which basically can uh, closes off uh, whatever we're running in the terminal and what i'm going to do is i'm going to do git space init we're going to initialize our github repository, uh, repository here uh, or repo, you might hear it more commonly called. Uh, and this is basically so we have access to version control. We can store our files somewhere. We can see our file changes throughout the lessons. And um, it's just good practice to make sure that we have version control to back up our work and make sure it's stored safely. So get in it. We're going to initialize a repo. Um, using master as the name of the initial branch. You get this uh, red message here. It's complete normal. It's basically telling us to rename the branch from master 
Um, most places, um, most of repos now, we no longer use master as our primary branch. We might want to rename it to something else. So I'm going to do what it says here. I'm going to do the. Uh, I'm going to rename the branch. So I'm going to do git branch minus m, and I'm going to call our main branch main. Uh, what that, and that's basically renamed it from master to main. In the left panel here, in the, I'm going to create a new file. It's going to be a dot git ignore file. So a dot git ignore file uh, essentially tells us files what files we don't want to commit. Um, files that we don't want pushing to GitHub. A prime example of that would be .env. We don't want our hidden variables because eventually this will have stuff like our database strings. We don't want those being sent up to GitHub. We want them hidden. We want them private. So we're not going to send those up to GitHub. We also don't want this big node modules folder here, which is which is generated when we install packages. So I'm going to inside the git ignore. I'm going to go to a new line. I'm going to do uh, node underscore modules. And you can see this will gray out on the left panel, the node modules folder there, because we don't want to send node modules up there. It's just a big, massive file, um, massive folder that we don't need to send. So if I then go back to the browser here, um, you can see, you'll see in the other tab I've got, I'm creating, uh, I'm already logged into GitHub. I've cre I'm creating a new repo, and this new repo name is going to be React Full Stack tutorial you can call the repo whatever you want but i'm just creating a repo here so we can push our work i'm going to create that repo and then what i need to do is i need to attach it to our project essentially so i need to copy this line here so git repo add origin i'm going to copy this i'm going to paste it into our terminal here and this essentially tells our Git repo that our remote is located at github.com forward slash Matt Dobson web uh, and so on. So now that we pointed our, Git, our local Git repo to our remote Git repo, I'm going to do Git add full stop. That line basically adds all, un all of our changes to a commit. We then need to, uh, ready to commit, sorry. We then need to do Git commit minus M. So git commit is, um, we, we want to commit those file changes. Minus M stands for message. So uh, dash M, I say minus M, it's dash M. And then in quotes, I'm just going to call this one our first commit. So we've now created our first commit. It's not up on GitHub though. If we go back to GitHub, I refresh, it's still not there. So what I'm going to do then is I'm going to do git push origin main. So what this does is it pushes our commit to the origin, which is github.com forward slash Matt Dobson web. And it's pushing it to our main branch that we set up. So when I do that, you'll see that it's pushed up to GitHub now, which is brilliant. I can go up to our, I can go back to our Git repo. If I then refresh, you can now see all of our files inside of here. Okay. So I think that pretty much sums it up for this lesson. Uh, in the next lesson, we'll look at expanding our routes. Um, but for now, we've got a good starting point. We've got our express server running or up and ready to run. Um, we've got, we used some basic routes. So we set up some basic routes and um, we are ready to expand and move on in the next lessons.